Welcome to the Advanced Sports Analytics Show here on Roto Grinders, brought to you by Jock Market. Stop throwing your money away. It's time to check out Jock Market, the app where daily fantasy becomes a stock exchange. Buy and sell shares of players in real time for real money. Download now for a 100% deposit match up to $50 using the promo code GRINDERS. That's the promo code grinders and get this if you don't turn a profit this week jock market is running back their first market guarantee to cover your losses in week five so download jock market in the app or play stores or check out jockmkt.com and use the promo code grinders for a 100 deposit match up to 50 dollars on your first deposit i'm jordan cooper aka blender at blender hd Joined by Stuart Gibson, the man behind the dials and the, the, the nodes and the, the, the levers and the sliders and the numbers at Advanced Sports Analytics uh, breaking down week five in the NFL. Uh, where I, 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 Stuart, I looked at the slate. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited. I, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited because uh, we don't got the Bills. We don't got the Chiefs. The Rams and the Seahawks just played. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, it's been a while. This may be a vomit stack slate. We may be going to vomit stack city on this slate because the totals are not as high as we've seen this year. This is the first slate of the year where only two games have a 50 plus total. Uh, are, are are you down? Are you down with some vomit stacks this week, Stewart? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a fun slate. I mean. Uh... Teams that I have been giving away money with this year have been the Seahawks and Ravens. So happy they're not on the slate uh, and, and the bills as well. And then people have been taking my money with the chiefs and bills uh, and Rams. So um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, the, the teams that have really uh, gotten me this year or that um, yeah, I've just been missing on uh, are not on the slate. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a funky slate, you know, big, uh, it's looking like a big kind of Derrick Henry decision point type slate where we get probably a handful of those each year. Um, I think that's going to be, you know, a, a pretty, pretty big decision point. You know, there's some uh, injury uncertainty with kind of uh, price leverage points like McCaffrey and cook. Um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think it should be good uh, aside from like Henry, not expecting huge, huge ownership. Uh, and like you said, just only uh, a couple games that are, above 50 or below 40 everything's kind of tightly bunched and uh yeah i think a good a good spot to uh to to take some uh take some weird shots on some some interesting stacks right so we're going to draw the line at 49 for for for, for this show typically we draw it at 50 but then we'd be spending 25 minutes talking about two games so uh, we'll be talking about primarily five games and then we'll we'll dive into some some lower totals from there but the first one on the docket the Giants at the Cowboys. It opened at 49 and a half. It's now up to 52 total. Uh, the Cowboys are favored by seven with a 29 and a half implied team total. Giants with 22.5. And uh, if we take a look at our current projections, uh, this rates out to be uh, the best projected in total pieces from the games, as well as the highest own. We got uh, Amari Cooper, 20%. CeeDee Lamb, 18%, because they've been priced down. Uh, Barkley, 16. Shepard, depending on if he plays, 17. Engram, 12. Galladay, 8. Zeke, 8. Dalton Schultz, 6. We may get some Kadarius Tony. It all depends whether or not Shepard plays. Uh, you, have to, you have to admit, from just a projection standpoint, uh, the, with the prices of, of both teams, with uh, Daniel Jones and Dak Prescott, that... Uh, it's the highest total game and uh, it's the best projected game other than ownership. I mean, you can make a lot of different combinations of this game and I still have lineups that, that are pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I typically prefer to be kind of underweight the most popular game, but given the scarcity of like really high total games uh, and I'm kind of just running initial stuff, like I, I, I'm, kind of getting lineups that are overweight on really both sides of this game. And that, that, like I said, it's typically not how I prefer to have my lineups look, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, there, there aren't a ton of great games. The, the, the value obviously is, is phenomenal. And uh, 
I think uh, if Shepard were to be out, you know, you get some really good value with guys like Ingram or, or Galladay. And if Shepard plays, you know, he, he becomes good value. Um, and unlike, say, like Dallas, Carolina last week, where it, it was pretty clear that, like Dallas was going to be significantly more popular. And, and I thought that made for a pretty good spot for Carolina side. Like, I don't really know that there's going to be a huge delta in ownership between either side. So, um, like, you know, in this type of spot last week, I, I thought Carolina was in a good spot, but not so sure that like the ownership's going to be super low with New York, such that they're uh, sneaky or kind of under the radar in any way. But yeah, I mean, just given the, given the, the kind of lack of premier games, um, I, I'm inclined to be overweight on this side or on this game, really on both sides. Uh, you know, I think Jones is particularly intriguing because he offers rushing upside where Dak, you know, at one point in his career had some of that. I'm not sure that he he does in this game, uh, you know, in this kind of current iteration of the Cowboys offense and just kind of where he's at in his career. Um, is that how you see it? I know kind of we're probably aligned in that typically being heavy on the most popular game isn't super desirable, but given the context of the slate, uh, do you think that, you know, overloading on this game uh, is slightly more palatable? Well, it's more palatable only because the, the amount of pieces that you could play. So, I mean, if it was a, if it was a game that was going to be the highest total over owned type of game, like if that Bill's Chiefs game was on this slate, like how many pieces of those games, like Mahomes kill Kelsey, uh digs and allen and sanders like there's there there aren't as many pieces but here i mean if even if you're building like let's say you're building skinny stacks two plus ones like how many combinations can you make of i mean you could make prescott plus cooper or plus lamb or plus schultz, schultz i like i guess uh you could run it back with barkley shepherd engram galladay i mean like it just seems like the combinations that you can make it's not just like this game is popular and there's only four pieces right it's not like when a vikings game is popular and it's like well cook jefferson thielen and that, that's it and they there you go and uh so like am i gonna play a lot of three plus ones i'm more likely to play three plus ones with the tight ends because tight end is not i mean we don't have kelsey on the slate and most of the tight ends don't project that well most people are going to be punting a tight end so I don't mind filling my tight end spot correlating with my stack. So Schultz and Engram are both two of the higher projected tight ends on the slate. So even though a lot of the pieces of this game are owned, the combinations, once you start piecing them together, they start losing lineup ownership the more you go down. But I think uh, if you were to not play this game in a lineup, I think Zeke Elliott, if he's going to be under 10% owned, I mean... To me, he's he's the one guy that if this game fails, he's the one that has 25 points because he has 120 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. And the game's what, uh, 21 to six or something. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm more likely to play Elliott in non game stacks of this. Not obviously not all of them. Uh, you could say the same for Barkley, but if Barkley's going to be 17 percent owned, it's not as appealing as an eight percent owned Elliott. But I think uh, the the more, and it doesn't even matter, like to me, Shepard doesn't even matter. If you take Shepard out, all that does is make Tony, just puts Tony in his spot. And if, if Shepard's in, uh, then Galladay probably goes a little bit under owned because people will play Shepard at 5,300. And then between Cooper and Lamb, that's a, that's a toss up. Uh, I just think there's, there's so many combinations of this that you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to avoid it. Like even three plus ones, you can make plenty. I see myself having a lot of secondaries of this game because they all project well together that I'll play a stack of another game and still have, you know, Lamb plus Engram, right? Just two sides, whatever they, wherever they fit in. So it's going to be the most popular game, but I I, I would think that in your stuff, if you're like the, the percentage that it, it's the top stack, has to be reflective of this because I mean we're going to get to some other games where where the team total may be high but the, the the player pricing and how they fit together just are not conducive to making good lineups yeah um no they're, they're both towards the top of kind of our uh simulated ROI of these stacks um 
So I know sometimes we talk about how like tight end is desirable to pair up with uh, quarterbacks for, you know, the, the kind of touchdown dependency and correlative pur purposes. Um, I do wonder, like, to me, it almost feels like there are, because of just the low price point for tight ends, is there viability to just taking tight ends as like kind of secondary stack pieces, like going something like Schultz or Galladay thinking that, like Schultz, I mean, we saw it even kind of last week where like Schultz had a highly productive game and Dak had a good but not great game. You know, he was not like a necessary piece for tournament winning lineups. Uh, it does kind of feel like the game could go under, but if Ingram or Schultz catch a touchdown and 60 yards or multiple touchdowns, that doesn't necessarily imply uh, standout games for like Prescott or Jones, the way say uh, Lamb or Cooper or, you know, an active shepherd or Galladay with shepherd and active, like to me, like a, a Cooper or lamb big game almost necessitates a DAC big game, not in the same way that I guess I feel about uh, say the tight ends. Um, does that but I don't make really sense look to you? Stewart, Stewart, I don't look at the tight end position that way when it comes to a three K tight end, like when it comes to Kelsey, when it comes to Waller, when it comes to Hawkinson, Kittle, like those guys are priced 5k, 6k, 7k. So it's like, oh, well, I, I kind of need 20 plus points out of them for a GPP ceiling. So how correlative are their ceilings to the quarterback? Well, most likely way more correlative. Hi, when yeah. it's a, when it's a pun tight end, it's like, dude, eight points. I could win. I mean, like, can I get okay. one, one red zone target? That's a touchdown. If I'm going to choose between 3k tight ends that I, all I need is eight points why if i have the ability to do it with the quarterback that i already have in my in my stack then just to me the correlation just adds a little bonus that like if they all if all these tight ends project for seven points median and i already have dak prescott in my lineup then why not have to have dalton schultz if i have joe burrow in my lineup why don't i have cj azoma rather than evan engram it's like just if they project the same just play the guy because when he when the tight end scores a touchdown it's going to come from the core. I mean, most likely, I mean, 99% of the time. So really I'm not, I'm not viewing the correlation from the tight end to the quarterback. It's more of a, I'm building a nine, nine slot lineup and I have to choose between three K tight end. So why not have it be the one that's with the quarterback? So I, like, I know what you're trying to say that like, well, a big, you know, Schultz could have a big game without what Prescott having a big game, but it's like, well, I don't need Schultz to have a big game. I just need to have him have a, have a game just just be out there yeah. catch. if he goes three for 50 with no touchdowns i'd like I, I could still win a gpp with eight points out of a 3k tight end you get that right yeah yeah that's true i guess like schultz and ingram are kind of in this middle you know they're 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 not like a min price tight end but they're not in the kelsey uh you know kittle waller type tier um i don't know I, i'm look in in kind of the lineups i've put together i'm kind of getting a handful of like secondarily correlated Schultz Ingram, uh, not not with one another, but you know Schultz versus Giants receiver Ingram versus. Uh, well, I mean, I'll receiver. get a bunch of that also. I'm, I'm just like like I'll get those secondary stacks. But if there's a tight end that fits with the stack that I have, then and if that fits in that way, then that fits in that way. I mean, they, to me, kind of kind of like they're all about equal. We're not like if it fits if it if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, so be it. Yep. Okay. Next game on the docket is the, the Packers at the Bengals. This game opened at 48 and a half. It's now up to 50 over under. Uh, the Green Bay Packers are a three-point road favorite, 26.5 implied team total. Bengals with a 24 implied team total. Uh, it looks like uh, T. Higgins will play this game. We still don't know the status of Joe Mixon, uh, but I believe he's at practice. They're trying to figure out if he's going to be good enough to play. Uh, obviously, the key piece in this entire game is Devontae Adams. And it seems to me that uh, I think I'm much more likely, it's weird to say, to play from the Burrow side than the Rodgers side and play instead of because, like, what second piece do you play with Rodgers? Lazard? Tanyan? Cobb? I mean, you can. But I think I'm more likely to go Burrow plus Higgins, I mean, these these receivers are all under 6K. Uh, in a game, I know that the Bengals are, you know, much more run heavy. But in a game that they're most likely to be behind, if the, if they up their play volume for, for, for this game, I think there's a way for 
between Chase Higgins and Boyd, I think two of them can get there. You know, if Joe Burrow has to throw 38 to 40 times, that I think it's more cost effective to play the game stack on that side with Adams as the run back rather than use Rogers Adams. And then one of those wide receivers, do you see it the same way? Yeah, I think so. Just given the the price point of Adams and the expected ownership on him. Um, I don't know. I, just in general, I, I think I'm not super optimistic about this game. The, the play that I would want to get is if Mixon is healthy uh, and there are no complications leading up to the game, that, that would be the spot I, I would be most uh, interested in. Like, with the addition of Higgins, I, to me, the, the the Bengals are kind of Tampa Bay-ish and that w- when you have Higgins, Boyd, and Chase in there, uh, there is the potential for them to get kind of spread out. Um, and for me, I, I feel a bit more confident in like the Tampa Bay version of that than Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, if I were to pick a side, I, I think Cincinnati uh, – passing but i think my preference would just be to be uh, a bit light on this game and uh, get some of Mixon, who i just like at the price point relative ownership uh combo of just his his run game role and uh productivity in the pass game that that would be where i would look to in this game i think i think there are more ways for this game to fail than succeed and the leverage play really in this game is the, the running back on the other side aaron jones we have him currently 6.4% projected owned. If Adams is going to be one of the highest owned wide receivers on the slate, like if this game fails, like Aaron Jones could still have a three touchdown game. I know he's a little bit priced up at 7,900, but I think you get enough leverage off of a 21, 22% owned Devonte Adams that as a, as a single one-off piece, I'm with you on Mixon also. The, my, the question is, is whether or not he plays. And if he right. plays, is he going to get 80 plus percent of the snaps? I don't know. I don't think I'm more likely to favor the, the, the favorite side of this game the, against the Bengals run defense. I don't think the, I don't think between Chase Higgins and Boyd, they'll be owned. Like we currently have Chase at 15% Higgins at eight and Tyler Boyd at three. Uh, Mick, we have Mixon at 13. I just think at, if he's going to be 13% owned, even though, you know, the wide receivers are going to be owned also. I, don't, I just don't feel like you get enough leverage for, for it to be worth it for your lineup as opposed to playing Aaron Jones and then none of the other players. So I will have some Jones in my lineups, but, but I, I'm with you. I think this game has a 50 total, but I think the pieces in the game don't fit together as well from a projection as well as ownership uh, perspective that – that it's that appealing to, you know, prioritize your lineups around. Yeah. And I think there's just a ton of interesting stuff you can do with the games that are just underneath this one in total, um, where they're just the price points better. Not sure you're really taking on like too much more ownership. Um, so yeah, this, this to me really across the board is a game I'd like to be under on. Okay. Let's go to the next game, which includes my favorite play on the entire slate. Okay. The next game is the Titans at the Jaguars open up at 48. It's now up to a 49 total. The Titans are a four and a half point favorite. They have a 26.75 implied team total. The Jaguars with a 22.25 implied team total. We have in this game, uh, the running backs are both projected to be over 20% owned. Uh, Henry at 24, James Robinson at 22. Can you, can you, uh, can you give me any, any discernible reason why AJ Brown at, at about eight or nine percent isn't like the 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 quintessential leverage play of leverage plays on the on literally the entire slate, like yeah, him not- and him and even Marvin Jones. I mean, Lavisca is going to be owned somewhat, but like to me, it seems very obvious that if a lot of people are playing a nine K Henry, how does he fail? And the and the Titans passing offense is fairly condensed. Uh, you know, if if Julio's back, I mean, like. Like if Julio's out and who and AJ Brown is in, he's sixty five hundred. Like him as a, just a one off. Even if you don't stack the, even if maybe you stack a Tannehill, AJ Brown, Ferkser, and then you could use either Robinson or Chenault or Marvin Jones as a run back, or you do the other side of the game. You go Trevor Lawrence plus Chenault plus Jones plus AJ Brown, and then you just hope for a Derrick Henry dud game, and the game still hits its total. 
Yeah, no, I, I like this game for kind of all the reasons that or all the plays that I think are going to be non chalk. I mean, so I was just doing like a, a quick data dive from last week's uh, game on the slant because I know that's kind of the, the, the tournament you like. Um, just, you know, I, I think like just to get some data points out there on Henry, uh, like last week in the slant, 23% own appeared in only 21% of the top 1% of lineup. So just like at his price point, $9,000, you know, he, he had a, a, a good game. I don't know that it's truly his ceiling game last week, but by and large, a, a strong performance and just wasn't even close to being a necessary piece to a top 1% or, uh, you know, top 10 or so lineup. And, you know, you get all these other guys like, you know, DJ Moore, like David Montgomery, who just, you know, uh, similar, similar ownerships. And just given the, the price that they're at, there are just so many more paths to them being not so much necessary pieces, but pieces that like give you a, a significantly elevated chance of being in the top. I just, to me at like 9,000, uh, I think Henry's going to get a ton of ownership. It's just like one of those weeks where, I mean, it, it's kind of become a trope, but I think a, a, a potentially correct one in that, you know, when Henry's going to be chalk, you want to be off him. When he's not chalk, uh, he becomes more palatable. Um, yeah, I, so I was running through just like kind of uh, some, some dummy lineups, just using some diversification settings and, uh, you know, doing some different stuff. And yeah, I have Chenault and Brown as the two most owned players in both single stack and double stack lineups that I put together. Uh, think they're just in awesome spots given the leverage against the two running backs. Um, you know, I think just stacking them with their quarterbacks or just secondary stacks from across each other uh, makes a ton of sense. I like Ferkser a good bit from the uh, Tennessee side. Marvin Jones, you touched on, uh, also not kind of in this upper echelon of players that this these runs were giving exposure to, but definitely in kind of the top, uh, I don't know, top quartile or so. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the expectation is that the game's going to go a certain way. You know, Tennessee is going to be up in kind of a comfortable but not blowout type game script, and Henry's just going to run all over them. Uh, I just think at the price, at the ownership, uh, it's worth placing bets on the game not scripting out exactly as kind of the, the public is uh, going to anticipate. Okay. Going to the next game on the docket. We got the lions at the Vikings. Uh, the game opened at 49. It's still at 49 as a total. Uh, the Vikings are a 10 point favorite, 29.5 implied total. The Lions with a 19.5 implied total. If I go to this game, uh, I mean, we got the, the classic example of Cook, Jefferson, Thielen. We don't know the status of Dalvin Cook as far as, like, he's probably going to play, but as far as how much of a load he has, uh, to me, this stack is obvious. If you're going to play this game, you play Cousins plus Jefferson or Thielen plus DeAndre Swift as your run back and maybe play some TJ Hawkinson and hopefully he gets there. But I mean, for a 49 total, this is one of those games where it's a 49 total, but how many combinations of like, like players, like whoever plays this game is going to play it in that way. Like there's the, like not going to have much Jamal Williams or Khalif Raymond or St. Brown or Cephas. Like none of these guys really project well. The Lions are horrible. They have a low team total and they even spread the ball around the Vikings are much more condensed. So I think I'm much more likely to play this game as a secondary stack or as one-offs play Swift plus Jefferson. Okay. But I don't see the need to be playing these three plus ones. I mean, what two guys would I play Swift Hawkinson with golf? Like they, they just, they, this game just not, just not, does not project. Well, it's low owned other than Swift. Everyone is everyone. I mean, we have Jefferson and Thielen both at three and four percent owned. So, like, to me, I could see them getting into a bunch of my lineups. But from a stacking perspective, I mean, I know you like condensed offenses because it's just it's easier. It's not like the Buccaneers. It's not like the Bengals. Like, you don't have to guess as much. But really, the for the prices, I just don't think 
I, I, you can build competitive lineups, but I don't think they're necessarily the best lineups you could build on DraftKings this week. Yeah, I guess what I would like to see is Cook in, and if there's some confident, you know, some indication of confidence in his health and green light, like I'd love to play Dalvin Cook uh, if healthy. We might not get, uh, we might get the indication that he won't be in. We might get the indication that he's in in green light. We might get some wishy-washy uh indication i mean if he's out i think uh well if he's out madison yeah. at 5500 becomes just yeah i'm gonna lock him into half my lineups i mean that, that yeah just seems ridiculous at that point so yeah i guess my preference would be to go uh with with one of the minnesota running backs whoever it is um and then i i, I like swift a good bit but not sure that i want to go with like dalvin plus swift or even madison madison plus swift feels a little more palatable just given the cumulative price of them uh i think for me i'm I'm not interested at all in stacking detroit just i think that the total is preventatively low uh and like you said they do get spread out a good bit uh for me this is a game i don't want to x out but i I think i'm just going to want exposure to individual pieces like swift cook madison Madison, if you, Cook is uh, right, oh, yes, Madison is only a play if Cook is out, not if right. Cook is in. Like, of course, you're still of not going to want to get Madison at forty percent usage at fifty five hundred. Of course, of course, yeah. Uh, Minnesota running back or Swift. Uh, I don't know. To me, like I guess though, Swift doesn't really make that. Just given how low Detroit's total is, uh, it does feel a little uncomfortable just playing like Swift as an individual piece. Like if he's going to have kind of a highly productive game, it likely means right that minnesota's i don't know how how do you feel about like cook versus cook across from swift i typically don't like running backs pair you know across each other that being said like swift is a somewhat different breed of running back where uh, how, how do you how do you see that um i mean typically i mean i don't force that i don't i typically look to avoid it yeah. uh but only t- typically the, the type of running backs that i don't mind are like swift and edmonds yeah. Like guy, guys that are their their ceilings don't come from twenty rushes and a hundred plus yard bonuses. It comes from uh, nine rushes and seven catches, right? Like yeah. so, they're essentially their de facto wide receiver that rushes the ball that you fit in a running back slot. So like, yeah, yeah. If 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 I if if Cook is fully fully in or whatever, like I don't mind playing them across from each. I don't, but it's a very select few. I think I name I think I named the only two. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if there's even another running back that I'd put. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think like it used to be Kamara, but maybe not anymore. Uh, yeah. But any, any running back that's going to, that could possibly, that could possibly see 10 targets in a game. I have to almost treat like a wide receiver. Right. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So I'll, I'll probably step back from that, that take of not be not being open to the pair of both running backs or running backs from both sides. Okay, the next game on the docket, San Francisco 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals. This game opened at 53 and a half. It is now down to 49. Uh, The Cardinals are a four-point favorite. They have a 26.5 implied team total. The 49ers with a 22 and a half team total. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is uh, what I, you know, we do pluses and minuses. This is my minus game of the entire slate. I believe this game will be over-owned, uh, especially on the San Francisco side. Uh, Trey Lance, at his price, starting, uh, these these uh, is, is projected to be 15% owned. Uh, Murray at 7%. Individually, from a median standpoint, I like both quarterbacks. Like, if you were going to play Murray or Lance in cash games without caring about correlation, I have no problem. That Trey Lance may be my cash quarterback, on DraftKings, uh, but the pieces together, like I just take a look at at our projections as well as the blitz projections. Samuel is up to seventy one hundred, Edmonds is up to fifty nine hundred. He's now a game time decision. I just saw on Twitter, Hopkins is nursing an injury. They spread the ball around in Arizona as it is. He's seventy six hundred. Kittle is like nursing an injury also at fifty six hundred at tight end, and now they've already priced AJ Green up to fifty one hundred. Christian Kirk at 4,900, Rondell Moore at 4,600. Ayuk is down to 4,500, but not really doing much in the offense. Uh, Like, 
it feels like I should like the game. I just don't like the prices and projections of these players. And if Samuel Edmonds and Kittle are all going to be double digit owned and Trey Lance, the more that he's owned, the more that these pieces are going to be owned. I'm, I, I think this game goes, I think this game goes over owned for its, its potential from a stacking perspective as one off. Sure. Play. You can play these guys as one offs, but I think I'm, 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 it's quite possible that, I mean, it's quite possible. I may not have any stacks of this game at all. Yeah. I definitely am with you on the San Francisco side. Uh, I, I think I'll get a little bit of Murray uh, stacks to me, like Murray Kirk, uh, which I know we've talked about in recent weeks makes decent sense. Uh, like Murray Kirk, Max Williams, something like that. Um, we're a cheaper not, guy. It could be AJ Green, it could be Ron Dalton. Basically, playing yeah. Murray without Hopkins because you yeah. want Murray to get there with his legs and then get some cheap touchdowns along the way. That Hopkins may still have 20 points, but at 7,600, it's just not going to, it's not going to win you a GPP. Yeah. Uh, so, I, 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 in general, I think I'm with you, would like to be underweight, but I, I'm not. I think ready to kind of fully exit, you know, with no, with no Mahomes, with no Josh Allen. Uh, I mean, Murray just kind of is in a league of his own, as far as uh, quarterbacks with ceilings go to me, like he's a a good bit ahead of like Dak Prescott. Uh, Definitely don't want to X out uh, that, that type of uh, upside from, from my player pool, but yeah, I'm talking primarily Stewart from the, from the Lance side. Like I could see Murray, like I, I could possibly get to like Murray plus green Murray plus even just a Murray Bax Williams, just like, it's almost a naked quarterback situation where I'm naked quarterback. And then just whatever I instead of playing Evan Ingram or someone, Ricky seals Jones at tight end, just, Oh, why not just play Max Williams there? Like I can see myself doing that, but it's just that, that Lance ownership just like I've been running. I, I ran projections for the DFS pregame show earlier today. And just in any configuration that I run, even with aggregated projections, like any stack with Lance, like Lance projects well. It's just that once you start adding more 49ers to your lineup, like your line, your projected total just keeps on going down and down and your ownership doesn't go anywhere because these guys are going to be owned that can they get there? Absolutely. Sure. They can get there. I just, I just think that it's going to be over owned for, for, what they're, I mean, I, I can't see these guys not being popular in this situation. Yeah. And I, I guess like, I'm sure the, the, the stance will be that Lance has a ceiling because of his rushing upside, but I don't know, just the way like Shanahan manages these quarterbacks. Uh, I mean, San Francisco is one of these teams where like Lance might only get, you know, 15 pass attempts all game. And even if he's super high efficiency, like I'm not sure that that's really enough passing volume to warrant a a big san francisco stack um my my guess is that shanahan will be fairly conservative uh with lance in his first career start but uh yeah I, yeah it's, it's going to be high ownership on him i'm not sure that it's really warranted okay now let's look at some games that are underneath these totals uh t- typically we go with a plus minus system you know games that you like and the games that you don't like and you think will be overowned. Uh, so I have, I, have, I have two games. I think we're going to agree with one, and we're definitely not going to agree with the second. Like the, se- the second one is truly vomitous. Uh, so what would you consider to be your, out of the rest of the games, uh, your, your, your plus stack, yeah. game stack situation? So, so- so I only really have one plus, but it's a, a big, big plus. I mean, I, I love Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, Fournette's going to be super popular. I think the narrative will be I'm, I'm seeing Tampa Bay as nine and a half point favorites. But like, you know, Tampa Bay is arguably the most pass heavy team in the league right now. Uh, the only other really teams that might compete with them are like uh, Buffalo and Kansas City, not on the main slate. So like. I'm not super concerned about that total for Brady. Uh, to me, you go one of Godwin and Brown, and I really think like Mike Evans is going to be the guy just that ownership is going to overlook. You could even go tight ends with like Howard or Brait uh, with no Gronk. Uh, and then like the Miami side, I think is fairly appealing, not, not to stack, but I do like the, the bring back options, you know, Gasicki, 
Waddle with uh, with no Will Fuller, like Miami's looking quite thin uh, at receiver. To me, there's pretty I, like usually a team like Tampa Bay, you kind of have a hard time picking out how to build the stacks. But with no with no Brady, with no Geo, uh, Tampa Bay is looking as condensed as ever. And the bring back option, I would say, uh, from the Miami side is fairly condensed uh, to me that that's like the the A plus spot of the week that I would want to be overweight on by by a lot. Uh, I'm absolutely where we're in 100 percent agreement. I think uh, the leverage play in this game is to fade for net and play the Brady stack. Right. That's one way to go or to mitigate for net ownership. It's weird for me to say, but one of my favorite quarterbacks on the slate is Jacoby Brissett. Tampa Bay, just you, you have to chuck the ball against them. Devon, you have uh, Will Fuller's out, so Waddle, Parker, Gazeki, they all project decently. They're ch- this, is, this is a vomit stack. I mean, this is truly a vomit stack. And you could pair the stack with Godwin Brown or Evans also if you want. But in my Fournette lineups, I could totally see, you know, well, Fournette's going to be 20 plus percent owned. It's like, well, if I'm playing a 1% owned uh, Jacoby Brissett with a with a 2% owned Devontae Parker and a 3% owned Jalen Waddle, like, like I could do anything I want with the rest of my life. I mean, like I could do any, Fournette could have a big game as long as the Dolphins keep up, like, like we're good. So like Jacoby Brissett is, is uh, in a number one on my vomit stack uh, list. I will be, I, I will be over the field on Dolphins. Uh, this week but uh yes but i'm with you this is this is the type of game that could go way over any of the other totals like i could see if the the giants game the cowboys games fail like we'll all be looking at ourselves going why didn't we play brady and when the bucks score 42 points like like it almost seems too obvious so you know as long as the dolphins are able to keep up this game could be completely in the air yeah yeah and like the knock with brady is he's kind of a you know no rushing upside statue quarterback but I mean, quarterbacks kind of thin this week, like no Mahomes, no Jackson, no Josh Allen, Stafford, Russ, like it does feel like a week that Brady could be kind of the tournament, uh, the tournament winning QB, you know, high scoring QB on the slate. Um, Yeah. And I'm with you on Brissett. I uh, am ashamed to admit, but played a decent bit of Brissett uh, stacks last week. It amounted to nothing, but um He's not he's not sneaking into any of my early builds this week, but um, it's not um, it, it's not a crazy concept to me because I, I did a decent bit of it last week. Um, you want to know my other plus? Yeah, sure. Because I'm, I'm I knew you would. I I I was pretty sure you wouldn't take the Dolphins Bucks. That this this takes a lot of a lot of balls. Okay. My yeah. other plus. <laughs> You're gonna think I'm nuts. <laughs> Okay, but from the numbers that I'm seeing, it makes sense. Mac Jones plus Jacoby Myers plus Jonu Smith plus Brandon Cooks is the run back. The Patriots Texans game, which has a 40 total, Patriots 24.25, Texans 15.75. Uh, now, I would never consider stacking a 40 total game on a slate where there's five games over fifth. I mean, like, on the past slates, but based on our numbers in our, in our projections, Damien Harris may get some ownership at 5,500, 11, 12, something percent. Jacoby Myers, maybe like 10% owned, like, but no one's going to stack this. I mean, and then you are able to even throw in a tight end, even if you want to play Henry over Smith or something like, like who's playing Mac Jones, but this Texans team, I mean, dude, this Texans team, like if they can't move the ball, like the Patriots could score 30 points this game. And even in a, in a 30 to 30 to 10 game, Brandon Cooks is, you know, 6,100. And if he's the only guy that's catching the ball, like why can't this vomit stack work out? Even why can't the stack work out? Even if the game only hits its total of 30 to 10. Yeah. It's, it's not a stack that's like popping uh and some of the stuff that I've been it doing, shouldn't, but, it shouldn't but, be bopping, Stuart. I'm, but, I'm not saying it should be. But but it makes sense. I mean, I, I um, the Texans have been a team that I haven't been opposed to stacking against, and um, yeah, the Patriots. Uh, and I've had a, a, a good bit of Mac Jones uh, stacks this year, mostly like Mac Jones, James White type stuff, but with no White. Uh, 
you know, I, I, I get, I get the Myers and I think Myers projects pretty well. So um, yeah, I, I think it checks out. Um, it's not, like I said, not, not one that's uh, popping for me, but it, it doesn't sound, uh, doesn't seem ridiculous. Um, yeah. Beyond, it, it's, it's kind of a, a weird slate where like, I, I'm, I'm going to be happy, uh, content, I think to just go overweight on the New York giants, Dallas game. And then, I don't know, just like take Tampa Bay and then some smatterings of like the, you know, Tannehill and potentially even like Trevor Lawrence or something and, you know, call it a day. I think for me, feels like a week where I want to be kind of tight uh, with my, not so much player pool, but with the pool of stacks, I think that are, that are in consideration. Right. Games that I'm kind of avoiding a little bit. Uh, the Chargers Browns game. I like the Chargers side. It's just that I don't like the Browns side. So like, I could see myself playing some like Herbert Allen lineups, maybe. I mean, the problem is, is that I I just, the Browns, it's just all over the place. I mean, like, I don't want to play Chubb at the price and Hunt. And I think OBJ is overpriced. And Baker Mayfield apparently is throwing with a torn labrum or something or other. Like, like maybe some of the pieces in the game, it's a 47 total. And the other one, that I think may get ownership depending on the status of Christian McCaffrey is the Eagles and the Panthers just only because if you've been playing the Eagles and the Panthers recently, they've treated you well, right? If you've been playing DJ Moore, if you've been playing Devonta Smith, if you've been playing Jalen hurts, I think the, the Panthers defense is much better, better than people give them credit for uh, the Eagles defense isn't, but if McCaffrey is back and only going to play 60% of the snaps, like not in full strength. Like I'm not going to pay 8,700 for McCaffrey, but all those t- targets that he gets are going to come away from Moore and Anderson also. And they're now more is 7,500. Uh, on the Philadelphia side, like, yeah, Hertz is a rushing quarterback. I just, I think this game will be, I don't think this will be a game that will be that owned, but I still think it's going to be, I still think DJ Moore will still end up with, at 7,500 with 15% ownership. And I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's warranted. I think I'm much more likely to take a shot on Robbie Anderson, if anything, because I just don't want, I don't want to pay these prices in a game that I, it's a, it's only a 45 total. It's not like you take a look at Philadelphia Carolina and you go, okay, this seems like an appealing game. And then I mention a uh, new England Patriot stack and you go, I can't possibly play that. It's like, it's a five point difference. It's not that dramatic of a difference uh, between the games. And I think these guys are going to be uh, over and I, I would, I would choose to change my stance. If McCaffrey is out, then I'm much more likely to get on the Carolina side, which then makes it more likely for me to get on the Eagle side and vice versa. So uh, what, what, what does your stuff show with the, 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 the ROI for, for, for this game? Cause I, I would have to think based on projections I see around the industry, it has to be much lower than other ones, even though, These are two teams that we typically target. Yeah, I actually have both of these teams as the two lowest uh, (laughs) ROI, two lowest ROI overall. So, like, even even Denver Pittsburgh would be higher than this. Uh, Yeah, from an R from a simulated ROI standpoint, uh, I think nine times out of ten, like this game will beat Denver Pittsburgh, but also, uh, you know, Pittsburgh Denver is going to get next to no ownership um yeah i guess i'm looking through just some stuff i mean the only other game i have uh circled is showing some signs of life would be like going back to that washington stack of like Fitz, samuel mclaurin you could bring back camara um you also have ricky seals jones in there a little punt tight end of 2500 yeah i think the problem with this looking at projections is that like i like the washington side but like other than Camara, like who the hell do you, who the hell do you play on New Orleans? Well, yeah, you, you just play Camara. <laughs> um, yeah, no, those are the two top uh, the the top stacks from this game that are bubbling to the top are pretty much swapping McLaurin and Seals Jones, but Samuel Fitz, Camara. I just and... got word from Adam Schefter that Panthers list McCaffrey is doubtful for Sunday. Oh, okay. So, so that, 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 that does that... increase the the Carolina, but still, it doesn't. I mean. DJ Moore is still expensive. I think it's still more likely to play Robbie Anderson at 5,000. And I'm still less, still, I may not even play the total, if anything, is going to go down because of this, right? Yeah. 
but I mean, McCaffrey is a huge share of Carolina offense. Like I think with incorporation for total, I still think it'll be, would be a net positive for pretty much all these Carolina guys, but um, yeah, I'll see. I'll, I will rerun it before uh, publishing our sub stack and we'll see. Right, that's what we'll you see do, if- right? You, you post, you post all of these metrics that we talk about on the show on your sub stack, which you could get at advanced sports analytics.com, right? Slash yep. sub stack, sub stack. You should create a little forwarder for that to make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, yeah access to the sub stack itself, which is just the written kind of weekly primer as well as the full suite of tools that are available on the site, which also includes, you know, some of the written content we do. Um, so yeah, I encourage you guys to check either of those out or, Follow us on Twitter. We'll have links out this afternoon linking off to uh, both of those pieces. And to follow Advanced Sports Analytics on Twitter, it's AS Analytics DFS. You could follow me at Blender HD. Feel free to like and subscribe if you like these shows. We could always appreciate a thumbs up. I'll wave my thummy thumbs at you. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit the notification bell. We got live shows all the time. I know we record this and post it later, but we got a whole Sunday mornings. We have multiple shows throughout the week. You can always subscribe and listen to these also on the Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Football feed, where you can get it on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcasts. But uh, for Stuart Gibson, I'm Jordan Cooper. This has been another edition of the Advanced Sports Analytics Show on rotogrinders.com. 